Hello, welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Um, today, I was inspired by my top. <laughs> yes, my blouse that I'm wearing. Um, not exactly a painting blouse, but nonetheless, I said I love this color and I wanted to show you how you just can paint anything. You never know what's going to inspire you. And I was inspired by the colors and the flowers on this blouse. So what I'd like to do today is just do a simple painting of the same flower, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to change the colors to get the grays and um, the, the tones of the grays, dark gray, light gray, um, black, white, lavender, violet, uh, just so you could um, see how you can get inspiration from anything, all right? So what I did was I had an old canvas and I just painted some black on real quick. Um, this is some DecoArt Black Gesso. I'm using all DecoArt products today. Uh, their premium paint line. If I have more time, I might even paint in some leaves with this light avocado, okay, which is the DecoArt Americana uh, and their regular line, okay? So we're gonna see how, how time goes. And um, again, I'm using um, a Fredericks canvas, red label. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful canvas with a medium tooth, okay, which can be used for anything. So I'm going to get started here. We're going to uh, list all the colors and everything later. And um, my brushes, I'll tell you as I'm going along, I'm going to start with a number 12 Decor Traditions flat brush, all right? I have a little variety of brushes because honestly, I forgot what I used when I did it. I sometimes use an angle brush, which you can also use. So it'd be best if you tried both and, and saw what you liked better, what's more comfortable for you, okay? Some of these flowers are a little tricky to get the bottom petals. And what I advise you to do is to turn your canvas the way your hand is natural. So if you feel natural this way, rather than go like this upside down, like I'm going to have to do, just turn your canvas, okay? That, that's what you can do at home and take your time. So that being said, I wanted to make sure I said that in case I forgot later. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to start just by putting maybe a nice gray black flower, all right? We want to mix up the grays and the whites and that's how this really pops off that black background. But I want some flowers to look like they're like receding and some to look up front. So that's why I made some bright white and some with the grays and all. And of course, using this blouse as inspiration, I just kind of copied it a little bit. Here we go. So again, I have the 12 flat. I'm just gonna dip in some black and some gray and get some of that on there. Now, I'll adjust my colors if I see it doesn't show at all, because I can see now that's gonna be really black and it probably won't show. So that's okay, I'll just dip it in a little gray or maybe even a little white and I'll tone that down a bit, all right? So I have like a gray black. Now, of course, I won't be able to copy that exactly. I just wanna show you the lesson on how to do it, all right? Here we go. So. Wiggle flower, I'm laying the brush flat, wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. Now, I have a feeling you're gonna have a hard time seeing that. So, I'm going to make it lighter. Now, at home, of course, you don't have to make it lighter. Um, you could just follow along, knowing that, you know, it should be like a gray color, but I don't think you'll be able to see it. So, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. And that, hopefully, you can see a little better. Now, I like the way the petals are coming out so far. So far, I'm not using any medium and I'm not using uh, any water, okay? Now, just in case I need medium, I do have an extender medium that will help the paint not dry so fast and help it flow better. So far, I'm pretty good. I just, like I said, I'm not sure if you're gonna see that so well, so I'm gonna actually change up the color again. So I'm doing one petal, another petal, making these five petals. So I'm laying the brush flat and I'm pushing up and wiggling and wiggling and wiggling. Now you see how I made that grayer? So what I'll do is I'll go back over to this and I'm just gonna go over it again and hopefully you can see that. When I do my other flowers, I'm gonna change it up even more because I, I think that you may have a little problem seeing that. So I'm just gonna do this one real fast and I'm gonna change the color up so you can see, okay? And I'll go slower next one. That I, I can tell, that's hard to see. So I'm gonna just rub this brush out a little bit in the bottom of these, um, the grating on here to make sure I get that paint out of the ferrule. I'm gonna change the color and for sure you'll see this one because I'm gonna be using white now. All right, so I'm dipping in the white and I think I'm gonna do the gray in the middle. All right, now this you will definitely be able to see. Here we go. All right, here's the white. Look how pretty that is. Now, see how it's a little bit dry? So all I have to do is dip that side. I don't necessarily have to dip the gray again, but I can dip the white. And I'm pushing, 
pulling it back, I'm pulling it back, and you can see that's what's making these, this nice pattern, okay? So I learned this uh, one stroke from Donna Dewberry, and uh, she taught me a lot, and I still use everything she taught me from years back, even, in, even when I paint in other mediums, okay? You can just mix everything you learn all together. There we go, all right? Now that looks pretty. See the difference once I start using the white? So what I'm trying to do is just get a nice big variation. Okay, I'm gonna push a little harder. There we go. I like that type of, of pedal better, but I wanted to show you the actual stroke on how you push, push it out, okay? There we go. And another one. So I kind of filled it in, okay? So you can see where we're going with this. So while I have this color on, I'm going to put a couple here and there with this color. Like I said, I'm not trying to copy the other one because that would take too long, but it's just the idea of getting the colors on, getting some darks next to the lights. That's what really helps your painting is darks next to lights. And of course, when you have a dark background and you put the lights on the dark background, that always helps. So since I have this dark one here, which I can go back in and change as well still, I'm gonna start putting one right next to it. Okay, so now this angle, you can see I'm doing it to the left. That's not what I want you to do as a beginner, all right? As a beginner, I want you to turn your canvas. Whichever way your arm feels natural, that's the way you should be painting. Here's a second one, and I can see it's getting a little dry. You can see, and that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect, okay? And I put more paint. There we go. So you can see I'm slowing down, which is hard for me to do because I usually do everything so fast. So I am slowing down a little, and that's going to help you see what I'm doing. So one, two, three, and then back, okay? You can do three, four, five, however you, however you want to, okay? And it doesn't necessarily have to be five petals. All right, so again, see, I'm touching the middle with the gray, pushing out. I want to fill this in, and I want it a little uneven, okay? So see how I made that one a little uneven? So you have your petals kind of different, different sizes and all. All right, again, with the same colors. This is just the gray with the white. I think I'll come put one maybe over here. Then we'll change the colors, all right? So again, see, slow, pushing it in. It's when you push it in that it pulls the paint colors back and forth, and that's how you get this nice coloring. Okay, there might be other ways to do it, I'm sure, um, where you can just do one petal at a time with one color and then fill in the middle. I like this, it just, it just seems quicker and it works well. All right, there we go. Now, see how this is dry? That's okay. I can do one of two things. I can go back like I just did and I can get more paint and I can go over it again, okay? Or I can use some extender medium, which will help it flow better. When you use water, you can dip in a little bit of water, but it will dilute the paint a little bit. This is high pigmented paint, okay? These are the premium paints. So you don't really, the, the reason why you buy premium paint is to get that high pigment. So you try not to use water. So you just get the, the medium and you use the medium, okay? But if you feel like you want to, it's okay. There we go. See, I'm taking my time. There we go. Okay, so of course, the slower you go, the neater you are, okay? So up here, when I was going real fast, you can see it's not as neat as this. And you can see how they're like popping off the page. That's what we want. Now, I can barely fit one in, but that's okay. I'll just come in here and do a, just a couple little petals, okay? So this ideally, when you're taking your time, is how they all should look, all right? And I, I think it looks pretty like that. So I'm just kind of, again, looking at my other one, and uh, maybe I'll do one more of this color and then we'll, we'll change up the color again, all right? And I think we'll move another bright one, maybe we'll put it down here, all right? This way I'll get every angle for you. Again, one, two, three, four, however, you, whatever feels comfortable, all right? And this is something else where you do need a little practice. Once you do it a few times, you'll, you'll get it. Don't get discouraged, you do have to practice, all right? I pulled that in a little and pulled it up from the side there, all right? Again, I'm on an angle again. You can see this is not a natural angle. 
So I'll try to just get one in here like this. And again, when I go back to my palette, all I'm doing is dipping, all right? I'm just dipping. Dipping and loading the brush. There we go. I did just two that time because I slipped a little. <laughs> and just squeeze one in there, okay? So I am gonna hold up my palette just to show you here. So all I'm doing is dipping and dipping and going in a little runway, okay? And you can see my other paint colors there. We'll, again, we'll run those colors there. So I'm basically using what we call limited palette because there's not that many colors on there. And now let me see if we have enough of this bright white. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm still gonna use the bright white, but I'm gonna change the gray in the middle to uh, dioxazine purple. So I'm just gonna go and rinse out my brush, and I'm just rubbing it along the grating. Again, we wanna make sure we get the paint out of the ferrule. If it dries in there, you ruin the brush, okay? These are beautiful traditions brushes. You don't wanna ruin them, all right? So again, I'm going to just dip one side and one side in the purple and the white. And I'm going to be doing the same flower, but now I'm going to be using purple in the middle. All right, so we'll see how that changes it. There we go, look at that pretty purple, okay? And again, I have two whites out today. I have a translucent white, and I have a titanium white. And I'm trying both to see, they're both working pretty much the same, okay? And it could be just because of the surface, and um, one uh, uh, has, I, I believe it would have a little less pigment in it and that's what would make it uh, translucent, okay? A little translucent. I'm not quite sure uh, if you can see that or not, but it's going very smoothly. There we go. So you can see that pretty purple. Oops, I almost mixed the colors up. If I did mix the colors up, then all you would have to do is let it dry and you can paint right over. Otherwise, you'll just be going back and forth, back and forth, and you'll be blending. You'll be over blending, okay, which is a common mistake. Almost did it again. And I'm gonna try to squeeze a little one in here. I don't like the way that one looks, so watch this. I am going over it again. Okay, so very, very pretty color, okay? I actually made it even more purple than my original painting, all right? And let's go do another one, dipping and dipping. So I'm just kind of making my composition here and seeing where I may want to put some purple. I think I'll put another one over here. I want to start to overlap some of these a little because it's nice when they overlap. All right, so now this angle is a good angle for my hand so you can see it comes out better because that's more of a natural angle. So that's what I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to teach that when you are painting, especially a beginner, you have to find what's more comfortable for you, okay? There we go, I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. All right, back again. Now every petal that you do, you are going to need paint. This is not um, a painting where you can just keep painting. You have to really be patient, sit someplace comfortable. You don't have to stand up and paint, sit someplace comfortable, and every one you go back and get more paint, okay? And that's how you're gonna get these really vivid, vivid colors and really fill it in. So I have one, two, three, four. So. Let's see, let me just try to do this and see how that worked, and that worked pretty good. Okay, so I see it's a little dry in there, and like I said, if I go back, it will make it a little more lavender. Looks pretty. And let's, let's go put another purple one over there. So I'm just kind of going with it as, as I see it. And over here, let's do a nice purple one. And I like the idea of having the white on the outside. Again, since it's the background is black, you can experiment with different colors because these flowers, once you learn these flowers, you can do so much with it. I remember painting um, a lot of these flowers on birdhouses. These, they look so pretty on the top of birdhouses. You know, anything, the, the trays that you get at the craft store. So these paints, of course, the deco art paints, you can get at all your local craft stores, um, Hobby Lobby and Michaels and AC Moore. They even have pouring, um, the paint for pours. You can even get at Home Depot now. So it's all over, so there's, uh, you know, or you can go to the Deco Art online and you can pick up your supplies there, okay? The pigments are wonderful, as you can see. You can see these beautiful colors. Okay, so that's good. So I'm gonna go away from this color now and I'm gonna go back to some gray, but I'm gonna make it um, paler, paler gray, because I wanna make sure that you see it on that black background. So I'm going to go in my gray and in the white. 
Again, same as what we started with. But now what I want to do is I just want to mix it so that it actually is uh, grayer on the outside. And we'll, we'll see how that works. So this one is a very, very little color. It's more muted, but you can see I need more paint. I need to straighten my brush out. And I am going to dip. I just dipped a little bit in the medium. All right. And I got a little purple in there, too. That's OK. Let's see what happens here. All right, so this is all one color. Not exactly what I wanted, but I'm going with it anyway. I could see just a little bit of a color change, not much. I'm going to put it on there just to show you how we can set the middle and we can go around the edges later. So that's all one color. So I'm going to wash my brush out because I don't want it all one color. All right. What I do want to do is um, go back to some of the original coloring and have white with maybe a little black. And we'll see if I can just mix it enough together so that you will be able to see it, OK? Because I, I, I want it to be muted, but you have to be able to see it. So that's important that you see it, OK? So I'm just dipping again, getting a lot of paint on that brush. I'm going to come in here. And let's see if I go over. And that's showing pretty good now. So we have some nice gray. I mix some black and some white. Here we go. So you have to fuss around a little bit with the colors. At home, I didn't have so much trouble with the colors because I, I wasn't you know, doing the show. I didn't have to worry if anybody else was looking at it at that time. So I think that looks pretty. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going back on top of some of the flowers I already painted. But I'm going back on the ones I painted a few minutes ago. This way, I gave them a little time to dry. The outside is drying. Some of the middles are not. So when I go back over, it's best if you try to let it dry a few minutes. So go back and forth between the flowers. And then this way, you give it some time to dry. OK, I'm going to go back in the black, back in the white, mix it up together a little bit. Like I said, I don't want that black really black. And I'm going to come over to this one now. And this should show on top, see? Because if I put it on top, and it's a different shade. So like I said, limited palette today. Just black, gray, purple. We're going to do some violet in the middle. There we go. I, I really love the way that black and the white looks, though. And hopefully this one you can see, because I like these shades. So it's fun because you can mix your colors, and then you can decide what you want. All right, I just wanted to go with the colors in my blouse, but you may have an idea of other colors. All right, so let me get another one of those in, and then we'll go back to the other color again. So you can do them all the same at the same time, you know, if you don't want to change your brush color and keep washing your brush. But I like the idea of going back and forth. It, it just helps me design it better. Now I'm going over that one, and it wasn't quite dry, so I picked a little bit up. And that's OK. There we go. OK, so this is going to be a little darker. I'm going to get a little more white on the one side. There we go. And you can see I need more paint. So going back to my paint pile. And now this is not showing so much. Oh, I may not worry about those edges too much as it's not showing that much. But I think it still looks pretty good. So what I'd like to do is get a couple more in with some lavender. All right. So I'm going to get a little lavender, because I like the way that lavender looks. And I'm looking at my top, and I don't know. There isn't really lavender, but I put it in there. <laughs> so I'm wiping my brush out, all right? So now I'm just going to take some white again. I mean, we're using a lot of white. I'm getting a little bit of the dioxazine purple, but I'm just blending. And I'm going to hold this up a little bit, OK? So you can see my little runway here. I'm actually going to put a little white in that side, because I want that to turn lavender now. See the difference between the dark and, and the light? So I went into a lavender color just by adding a little white. OK? Here, I was going to do the brush in the opposite direction, so I just went over to another spot rather than mix it all together. I wasn't ready to mix it together at that time. So let me just add a little drop more. So I have enough. And you can see some of that medium going in there. All right, so now we'll see if we get a little bit of the lavender. So I'm going to come right here in the middle. I'm going to put the lavender in the middle. And let's see how we do. Yep. OK, so now you can see the difference between the dark purple and the lavender. So I can tell I need more paint, though. So I'm going to go back and mix. So a lot of this lesson is starting to learn to mix, which is good. You know, a lot of people think you can't mix acrylic paint, but you certainly can. 
There we go. There, see how much better it is when I have more paint. So in this case, you do need pretty much paint, each petal, plus my canvas in the back is dry, all right? So you're painting on a very dry canvas. There we go. Let me make sure I have my paint colors the right direction. Get a couple more in there. All right, and I'll come this way. Just squeeze another one in there. So I do like the idea of having the lavender, the purple, and then like I said, we're gonna put some violet in the middle. So I'm gonna do just a couple more so I can start to show you the um, insides, how to do the inside of the, the flower. So let's see, let's put one of these over here and I can tell already I'm looking at that brush and I know that I need more paint. Here we go. All righty, and I love lavender. I had my bedroom was painted lavender. Oop. Now, what I did there was I went on the wrong side and I mixed the colors together. So that's a little oops. And all I have to do is wipe my brush off on a paper towel and go back into my purple and my white again and reblend it. Okay, so that's what happens when you try to hurry. <laughs> all right, so I definitely want the lavender. All right, here we go again. All right, so I have the nice white with the lavender, and you'll see what I can do there. All I have to do is go back over that again and see what I did and made it more lavender, all right? So I just wanna show you, I can fill in some more flowers, but I do wanna show you how to do the little petals that I have falling off, because it's, it's simple. Really what it is, it's just a regular petal on, a little, on the side, all right? So I'm just holding the brush here and going to do a little petal like this and it looks like maybe it's falling off all right again you need I'm doing it a little bit on the side you need to find your your happy place for your hand all right and I'm just going to do three of these so I'm just kind of wiggling a couple of these out there we go and I'll put one down here so maybe that kind of looks like it's just kind of falling off all right I want to do the middles and then if I have time I'll go back and put more flowers in so for the middles, okay, I just washed off my brush a little bit, all right. For the middles, what I'm doing is I'm using the mini mop, number one mini mop, okay. Now, you can see on my blouse there's some violet in there, some gray in the middle, so it's whatever you decide you want to do. Now, when I have these darker colors, I'm going to put something brighter, of course, so it stays, you know, so it shows out, stands out, okay. So, I'm just taking this little mop brush. I'm gonna lift this up again, taking this little mop, and I'm just dabbing it, okay? See, just dabbing it, very gently dabbing. And that's what I'm gonna do for all the middles. So I'm going to come in, say, to this one and dab. Look at that beautiful bright color, okay? So that's gonna bring out that dark flower. Um, let me see, I'm just gonna do them varied. Now, this one, the paint is wet in the middle, okay? And that's okay, see what happened? It mixed another little color. So all I have to do is wipe this off, I'm going to leave it just as it is. It looks nice. And I'm going to go over and see which one is dry. This one is dry. All right. And of course, when you put a color on top of a color, um, some of the background color will show through sometimes, and that's, that looks nice. All right. Here, I'm just going to dab a little bit right here, here, and here. All right. Falling right off there. We had those little petals. Maybe the wind blew, and they came off. And I'll do this here. And it's so simple. This is the simplest part of it, is the dabbing. And I do want to do some black dabbing and some gray dabbing. So I want to just kind of step back again and take a peek where I, I, I just love this color. So I think I'm going to use a little extra of this color. I love this color. This is a quinacridone violet. All right, let's see where else. Uh, let's do this one here. That's going to really stand out. Okay. And I think that gray one, we're going to do this gray one. Now it's still a little wet, so we'll see what happens. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush off. I see that what I did was I added a little white to that, so I probably didn't have to rinse it off. What I did was I added a little white to this color to make it like a pink. Okay, like it look, that looks like a lavenderish pink. All right, so let's see how that works. All right, I got nice, a nice little pink color. And let's go into one. Let me see, this one, I could see they're still a little wet. I'll go into some of the dry, so now we have a little lavender. I like the lavender. It won't show on there, so I'm gonna skip that one. 
See? We got, I think it looks pretty. I like the pink. See, we're actually changing it a little bit from my blouse. And we're going with the flow here, so I think it looks really pretty like that. Let's do this other one in pink. Just a little bit of dabbing, all right? And let's see, I think I'm gonna do this purple. Oh, I don't know if I like that one on that purple. So I may go back and change it to gray. I'm gonna rinse out my brush again and just dry it out a little bit, okay? And gonna go to my gray. And again, just dabbing. I want to go and put now a little varied color. Actually, it's not bad. Okay, let me see if I forgot any here. See, oh, that picked that color up because it was still wet. That's okay. So I'll just wipe it off, go back in my gray, and I'll just try to add a little bit more on top, okay? And you can see I got some of that purple in there. Now, if that bothered me, all I could do is let it dry a while because now I have a big heavy layer of paint on there and I can just go back and change it again. All right, let me see if I forgot any. I did not forget any. So now we'll go back and put a little bit of details on. Just a little bit. So I'm just wiping that brush out, just kind of dabbing in a little bit of the black, all right? So maybe over here we'll just come and put a little black. This one I don't know, I put a little I don't know if I like it so much, but I think it's okay. Just want to dab a little black here and there. Just to kind of show a little outline, let it pop a little bit more. See, it's turning gray when it's wet. That's okay. Like I said, this is not a, a the, paint, the object of this painting is just to learn how to get these flowers on, and then you can decide. You can see I'm just kind of holding my wrist here just so I have a little bit more support. Okay, and I'm actually changing this a little bit, all right? So I think that looks, it looks pretty. <laughs> I might have time now to do just a couple of more, maybe a little outlining, let's see. Um, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, let me take a peek here at what I have. Um, what you can do, which I didn't leave my other brush out, is uh, you can take a round brush and you can go along the edge. I'm just taking a, um, an angle brush right now. I just want to show you, if any of this bothers you, if you feel like it's dry in the end, you can take a little round brush. Let me find a spot, that, so I want to make sure I'm not blocking it. And you can just go along the edge, okay? I can't do it too well with this brush. I'd have to put a lot of paint on. But all you would have to do is you can actually go and you can outline and go a little bit in between the flowers, okay? And then that'll even make it stand out. So like especially this gray that's all one tone, you can kind of come in and embellish it a little, okay? Just to make it look a little bit more defined. Same thing up here, you can define it. Now, I wouldn't necessarily define it maybe with the white. I might have used, you know, maybe use a muted gray. But all in all, I, th I think you get the point of it. So, what I'd like you to do is, is practice mixing some of your colors with a limited palette is better when you're a beginner. Um, see what kind of design you want. I mean, I would probably fill this in a little bit more. Um, the way that I got that beautiful shiny um, sealer on it is I did use um, this sealer here, which is the Deco Art Traditions multi-surface sealer. And then I wanted it even shinier. So what I did was I took the Deco Art triple, triple thick and I went over it, okay? So um, try the products, they, they really work very well. You can see the difference between when it's not varnished and when it's varnished, all right? And I think it really looks beautiful, varnished and framed. So thanks for tuning in. Please uh, take a look at my other shows. And um, thank you again.